Hey guys, it's Mike here, and if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a big fan of the Dragon Ball manga. I've read this thing way more times than I can really even count at this point in time, uh, which is, well, dozens, hundreds, who really knows? The point of the matter is, I love the Dragon Ball franchise, and I really love the original format that Akira Toriyama created starting back in 1984 and running up to 1995, 11 continuous years of drawing the manga. However, one of the things uh, because of this that I ended up doing on my channel a little while back, which I'll show you right now, is I actually ran a poll asking everyone a very simple question related to that, which is, have you read the Dragon Ball manga? And I suppose I was a little bit surprised and even disconcerted to find that out of my audience that I polled, the majority of people said that they in fact have not read the manga. And of course, this is my audience, who tends to be more hardcore Dragon Ball fans. Not just that, but if we were to take this and expand it to casuals, to the vast majority of people who have seen any kind of Dragon Ball content in the past, it's very likely that this number of yes would only continue to go down and diminish as the no's took hold. And as a result, that's something that I found, well, a little bit disappointing as somebody who truly loves this franchise, as somebody who has been in fact watching and reading it ever since I was a kid for going on or somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 years now. During that time, I came to realize, well, you know, it is very similar to a lot of other franchises that also themselves have as well uh, spawned from a comic book or manga, whether it be in the case of Western comic books like, uh, you know, Marvel and DC, whether it be movie franchises that spawn from books like, for example, Lord of the Rings or even Harry Potter or Game of Thrones, especially, you know, uh, depending upon the length and word count of some certain books, uh, you know, the fact is that many people have not truly seen or appreciated the work in its original format. And so that's why this video is going to exist now, because I am going to be saying to all Dragon Ball fans, putting you guys on notice by saying you need to read the manga. And I'm going to explain exactly why by showing, well, the manga itself. In fact, when it comes to reading the manga, my favorite preference when it comes to reading uh, is going to actually be, let me put this mouse down here, my physical manga itself. Of course, I have the manga in a number of different ways, physically and digitally, but I'm happy that I purchased the entire manga years ago when I began uh, truly in earnest my journey into the franchise's original creation, which is uh, my favorite way of reading it typically the Viz Bigs, if I'm going to be reading it in terms of uh, the, well, physical medium. As you can see here, the initial manga was primarily black and white, which you could see that Toriyama drew this just like this. Here's Gohan snapping and becoming a Super Saiyan 2 or Super Saiyan Su, as they say in the Japanese. And one of the things you immediately notice is the amazing art that Akira Toriyama did. See, the thing is that when it comes to the manga, Toriyama drew, with the help of some assistance here and there, this chapter by chapter, almost every single week without break. The man, it shows just how incredibly talented he is that he literally wrote, conceived, and drew an entire comic book chapter by chapter, one per week. Imagine just how hard it is to draw one picture of Gohan like this. The guy drew chapter after chapter after chapter every single week. Uh, showing just how much of an insane talent the guy is. Not just that, but it goes even further because not all of it is in black and white, as a matter of fact. The thing is that you could see right here, Toriyama 
and the different publications and versions of it would actually mix up the colors sometimes. You notice how Trunks actually was a Super Saiyan God before Goku, for example. You know, he was basically pulling an Araki or a Araki from Jojo by changing up the color tone and totally making it different depending upon one chapter, one page to the next. That's certain things that you completely miss out, as well as the physical, tangible experience of holding a book in your hand. Uh, pieces of a dead tree that have ink all over them, you know, from a squid or an octopus, and looking at everything together as you are truly enjoying taking it in and experiencing it the way in its most truest distilled format that Toriyama himself created. Now, of course, physical is my preferred version, but it isn't the only version of the manga you can read. It's digital now. You can read it on your phone, and of course, you can read it on your computer, on your tablet, on your mobile devices or video game devices, wherever have you, through various subscription services, websites, and, well, other ways of, uh, you know, uh, go and fall on yar, if you know what I mean. But the fact of the matter is, there are so many ways and availabilities for you guys to read this right now, here and now, that it's become less and less of an argument as to why you can't read it, even physically if you want to. Depending upon where you live, you can go right down to your local library and you could read this for free right now. Either it's in stock there, or you can ask them to have it brought to the library location for free and read it right there, even use their computers and their services, uh, get on the Shonen Jump or Shueisha apps and just start putting that thing out there. But when you're doing that, you will notice some major differences in terms of the adaptation itself. Because when you're reading Akira Toriyama's true distilled version of the story, what he wrote, he drew, he conceived in his mind every single week, you start no to notice some major differences, which I'll begin to show you right now, in fact. Uh, if my mouse will actually cooperate with me, which it doesn't seem to be doing for some weird reason. Uh, let me talk to you about one of the biggest differences with the anime and manga, which begins with, well, another spin-off of sorts, which is actually regarding Trunks, future Trunks. One of the biggest differences in adaptation begins with, well, certain chapters or stories or backstories being very different, not just from the English dub, but even the Japanese. Look, for example, Trunks the story, Toriyama's version of Trunks' backstory. Whereas you could see in this version, the story that Toriyama drew, well, look, Trunks was actually already a Super Saiyan before he even saw Gohan dying. As a matter of fact, Gohan's death also is quite different because Gohan goes to fight the android just like he did in the special, but what happens then? Well, as you can see, it goes very differently because Gohan is told by Seventeen the last time that he had fought him, he wasn't even using half of his full strength. Uh, and as a result, he rushes in to kill him. Now, of course, this is the Tonkoban release. This is the Kansenban, the color version. And there are even fan colorations. As a matter of fact, that's part of what I often use for fair use purposes in my videos. Fans took the time and the pleasure of coloring in certain sections that they never officially released, because that's how passionate they are. There's other fan bases that have done that too, like JoJo, for example, with the JoJo's full color adventure. It's wonderful. And as you can see again, it totally changes the look, not just that to match the anime, but additionally, the change to the story is quite different. Trunks doesn't become a Super Saiyan here because he already was one. This goes even further than that, too, because there are other major things that differ. Like, for example, one of the things that people often bring up when it comes to the anime, when it comes to Dragon Ball Z especially, is the fight between Goku and Frieza after he attacked Namek. Now, what happens then? Well, we have the five minutes, Goku, until Namek explodes. You know, uh, in the even more ridiculous fashion, Dragon Ball P. And what happens? Well, then, then began the biggest lie in anime history. Uh, the four and a half hour fight that actually is supposed to be five minutes. But the truth is that 
that again not only is cinematic timing which is stretched to its extreme but not just that but in the manga they don't have all of the filler and the padding that toei added in because they kept catching up to the manga as it was coming out weekly you see when toriyama was releasing his different chapters every single week well the anime also was running because of how popular it was the anime started two years after toriyama started the manga so they would catch up a lot and so they need to stretch it out and pad it out with filler and padding but if you watch this fight in the manga it's so much faster look just how quickly frieza goes full power and depending upon how you read this arc depending upon how fast you read it can last as long as you want it can last for five minutes or less it can last for hours or weeks depending upon how quickly you read the chapter it took people weeks to watch that to read this in the manga uh, months in fact whereas you know in the anime typically they'd put more chapters in episodes and so the pacing is very different the anime pacing typically is much faster and again look how amazing the art is all drawn by toriyama all conceived and crafted i mean just look at this awesome chapter uh start panel the page the cover that toriyama drew look at this amazing one right here look at how awesome how badass goku looks with all of the the crumbling planet behind him the blood streaking down his face uh look at this chapter intro this manga panel and page of the boo saga look how detailed everything is here mr satan with the wrinkles in his head and his hair uh goten's abs that are rippling gohan's face look at all the details and the shading in, in his hair look at piccolo's face i mean crazy it looks like a jojo character how detailed his face is he looks like joey wheeler joe nichu uh when he is uh you know uh doing one of his crazy appearances in in the boo saga and of course contrasted with the different types like boo where it's less detailed because of course that's something toriyama would often do uh and influenced anime and manga for the sake of well humor or the tone and the style another major thing that's different in the manga compared to the anime also is the fact that there is way more well graphic violence this is something too that a lot of people don't realize because they've only seen the anime but if you look at it for example a lot of it in the anime is actually toned down compared to the manga look at the scene where dr jero <laughs> uh, goes and grabs this man out of the car pulls him right through the top of his his car and then literally squeezes his head off like a grape to quote Quaman. man you know i'm actually giving credit on like a certain uh watching platform that has a lot of mojo but either way you have this scene or you also have this scene where gohan is just braining literally the cell juniors you can see their eyeball popping out the brains uh, splattered everywhere and it only gets more and more graphic i mean just look how he chops these guys up with his uh power uh where they fly at him psh, psh, splatter splatter smashed obliterated uh you know totally different from the anime where they turn into deatomized smoke basically vapor but in this nah they're just splattered like bugs all over the place just like you know the crickets that they in the cicadas that they basically represent visually then look at this scene also from the future trunks arc this is toned down in the final episode of trunks when he kills the androids in the future in the anime trunks saves this old man who shoots 17 in the face but in the manga we actually see 17 kills him before trunks even shows up you even see the sound effect eat lead the bang the bullet ejecting the cartridge uh the jacket uh coming out 17 killed this guy but in the anime they tone that down trunks saves him after he kills them uh but in uh the manga well he's standing alone and then of course even the boo saga massively toned down scene we have gohan where uh they go to enter Bobby's ship and shortly before that we see there is a scene where gohan looks over to a farm now in the anime uh, we see the dead bodies but in the manga we actually see what's become of them we see that they're severed we could see that the hands are missing there's blood everywhere the the all the dead family this this woman's body is half of it's gone you know and it's like 
this is just how graphic Toriyama initially drew things, that even the anime, back when there were way less standards about uh, how violent things could be in anime, especially, uh, well, they were quite different back then. Another thing is that you miss out on a lot of little things, too, from the anime that are in the manga, actually, that are not included in the anime. Like, for example, at the start of the releases of the individual volumes of the manga, you could actually see a number of different cool little tidbits and Q&As. Like, for example, this one with Toriyama Sensei, where he goes and talks and gives little quotes. He drew a picture of himself reading comics and, you know, uh, just hanging out in his house. And then it says, I can't sit around doing nothing. I don't feel relaxed unless I'm totally involved in something. Kind of like how sharks have to keep swimming or they die. I need to be immersed, which sometimes you'll see misspellings too because of this, in something no matter how pointless it may be. But because of this, when I don't have anything to do, I get really restless and pace around my room. I feel that, Toriyama. It would be really nice if work, uh, I like how he puts it in quotes, was one of those things I could really get involved in. Kira Toriyama, 1991. And we always get these nice little things. We get these summaries of where everyone is uh, in terms of the story, taking a look at all the characters, their introductions, their bios that were given the main characters, and not just that, but then also a little summary as to where everyone is before a table of contents and the manga picking back up in black and white. In many ways, I actually prefer the black and white to the colored one. I often will use the colored one, again, because of the fact that it is, in fact, well, uh, you know, even more fair use, but also because it's more cinematic, and most of you guys have only really seen the anime. So, as a result, well, it becomes a little bit more in line with what you're used to. But in a lot of ways, I think the manga looks better in black and white because there's so much better shading and toning. And oftentimes when it comes to the uh, anime itself, uh, you know, the coloration, sometimes I feel like doesn't necessarily match what Toriyama was going for. And additionally, too, I mean, again, talk about violence. Look at this with Frieza. Additionally, you know, a lot of times with the blast, for example, when Goku fires his Kamehameha in the manga, it's always yellow. Uh, and most of the key blasts are yellow. Frieza gets his own colorized blast, but most of them are yellow. It takes away from the uniqueness uh, that, well, the black and white, you know, you can interpret it your own way as to how the colors might have been or see the strange coloration I showed you from Toriyama sometimes. Uh, but again, there's other little differences too. Look at this, for example. The uh, Dragon Ball's anime or the Android ABCs. This is something that was never included in the anime with the little chibi characters, as they call them, where they explain the history of Dr. Jero's. <laughs> yes, I know it's Jero if you guys have never seen those other videos. Uh, creations. Talk about how 1 through 7 was defective, then we got 8 or 9 through 15 also defective, but 13, 14, 15 close to perfection. Of course, we would get them in the movie, Super Android 13, 16, 19, 20. We get all this little explanation. We also even get a breakdown of who was used in terms of Cell's genome and the genes that were spliced into him. Little things you never see in the anime. You also get a lot of jokes that are never included either. Look at this, for example, in the Boo Saga. There's a lot of fourth wall breaking in Dragon Ball. Gohan looks at the camera, you know, uh, which Toriyama's drawing, so he looks at the reader, basically, and he says, this is Krillin. He hasn't shaved his head since the fight was so. And we get other examples like that, too, where uh, he's going around and talking to other characters like Piccolo, for instance. And, you know, we see these little tidbits, him talking to the camera, and other things along the way, too. We even get this at the start of the Boo Saga, which, of course, they never show in the anime, because how would they do this, where Toriyama has Master Roshi talking and saying, Dragon Ball isn't over yet. Sure, Goku's gone, but that kid of his will take his place. And the reintroduction uh, of the new main character of Gohan. Things just typically were left a lot more open in that regard, whereas Toriyama explained it. You even have little uh, inside jokes like this that they never could have included in the anime because how would they really explain it? Like, for example, Goten Trunks, look at this scene. Uh, the two of them are fusing. Now, look at the last time they fused right before this. You notice all the times they use the exact same panels. Right here, go ahead, right here. 
Toriyama literally copy and pasted them to save time. And he even makes a joke here because apparently the, the editor called him out. And so we have Krillin here saying, wait a minute, what's Toriyama trying to pull? These panels got to be photocopies. And then Toriyama, who draws himself as Toriba, which we see briefly in the original Dragon Ball in the tree when Goku returns Turtle to the ocean, for example. And he says, hmm, Mr. Editor, you really don't have to pay me for this page. So, you know, even Bird on his shirt because, well, Toriyama, Birdman, basically. Uh, so the thing is that, again, these are little things that they never included in the anime because these are manga-only references. And these are just uh, the tip of the iceberg in terms of all the little differences, all the little changes, and the incredible variations, as well as things, whether it be pacing or differences in overall medium that are between and changed from the anime to the manga, which is another reason why, guys, you really need to read the manga. The least of all because, again, you will be able to truly see and appreciate what Toriyama Akira Sensei, the mangaka from Japan, uh, had created in the first place. Another thing is, too, if you guys haven't read manga yet, well, there's something that you might not know, which is that with manga, you don't actually start and read it the same way you would an American comic, a Western comic. With manga, you don't start at the uh, cover and go from left to right like this. You actually will start the complete opposite way. You will start at what seems like the end, the back, and not just that, but when you read the manga, you will actually also be reading it from right to left. So you'll read this dialogue before this dialogue. And so, you know, for somebody like me who uh, has dyslexia, you know, again, they're less of an excuse for people to not read the manga when somebody who struggles to read sometimes uh, can do it very easily, just like any of you probably can for the most part. I'll say for the most part. Uh, of course, you know, it is it isn't necessarily the thing that everyone is physically capable of doing. I understand that, uh, you know, in those cases, I understand, uh, you know, if, if it's hard for you to see, and so you gotta watch and listen to it. I'll talk about this more when I get into my video in the future of why everyone needs to see the anime in Japanese. That's another thing I'm gonna do a whole video about. But the thing is that you get used to this, and you get so accustomed to it that, well, you are able to, in fact, figure this out and sometimes prefer it. For me, it's easier to read from right to left than it is from left to right. In Japanese, when you're initially reading it, they actually will read the text in this direction, vertically. And so that's why sometimes the panels will be changed like this or they'll be shaped in certain directions. But there's so many things that everyone will pick up on and truly come to appreciate the mastery involved, not just in Super Saiyajin right here, uh, as you can even see on the cover, but also in the incredible uh, work that Toriyama put into his art, his craft, 11 years on the grind, making uh, perhaps the greatest manga of all time. But all right, guys, that is why I believe you should be absolutely, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, prioritizing reading the manga. You need to do it, guys, all right? As much as you need to breathe oxygen and drink water. Well, assuming you do either of those things. Uh, and you're not like Frieza. I see you, Frieza. You better not blow up the planet before people get to read the manga. Let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. Have you read the manga? And if not, well please do so because I think you'll really enjoy it. Additionally, share this video out with people that you know that have not read the manga. Maybe you're trying to convince them to do so, or maybe you just kind of want to articulate in an easier way, you know? Let me do the work for you in terms of explaining this. You know, it's like the nostalgia critic. I've watched it so you don't have to, or whatever he says. The fact of the matter is, I'm doing that for you too, right here in this video. Here's the Dragon Ball manga apologetics video, guys. So share it out. Share your thoughts, like, comment, I already said that, and subscribe. And make sure to stick around, because there's a lot more manga videos to come in the future.
Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, and you better subscribe.